Hello everyone and welcome back to the 13 Nights of Magic, the series dedicated to bringing you the terrifying tales from Magic the Gathering in celebration of this Halloween season. In the previous video, we looked at the mentally unstable Memnarch and how he transformed the metal world of Argentum to the rich habitat of Mirrodin. Though life eventually settled on Mirrodin after Memnarch's destruction, the plane would continue to feel the effects of the tyrant's madness. That same glistening Phyrexian oil which corrupted Memnarch and brought Mirrodin into being would give birth to another more sinister world, the rise of New Phyrexia. The Phyrexians are a race of mechanically and biomechanical life forms, a twisted combination of living components with machine mentalities. Their goal is to evolve, spread, assimilate, and conquer. Their original home of Phyrexia, ruled by the evil being known as Yogmoth, was ultimately destroyed by the combined efforts of the Legacy Weapon and the Nine Titans, a group of nine planeswalkers brought together to end the Phyrexian threat. Even so, the life force of the Phyrexians is that they can survive through anything. Even with their leader and plane gone, Phyrexians were still able to emerge. On Mirrodin, the Phyrexian oil was busy corrupting whatever life forms and artifacts it came into contact with, starting with the very core of Mirrodin itself. From that point on, Mirrodin would be besieged by newly born Phyrexian creatures, led by their new leaders, the Praetors. Back when Yogmoth ruled the Phyrexians, his forces typically harnessed the power of artificial colorless mana and black mana. But with his defeat, the Phyrexians on Mirrodin were allowed to evolve and adapt to each of the five mana alignments. These new Phyrexians, still guided by their desire to control and assimilate, now had access to never before seen and frightening adaptive possibilities. But without an unquestioned leader, the evolution of the five mana Phyrexian army garnered a rather strange development. Rather than being a single unified force as Phyrexia once was, these new Phyrexians splintered off into separate factions, realizing their mana alignments created completely different mentalities. These factions still worked with each other to achieve their ultimate goal, the utter control of Mirrodin, but they had different ideas on how to reach that goal. The new Phyrexians were much like a nation of unified states, each working together yet having their own unique identities. And like states, each of these factions were ruled over by different leaders, these rulers are known as the Praetors. The Praetor of the Blue Aligned Phyrexians is Jin Gitaxius, Core Augur. Hunched and barbed, this Praetor is covered in a chrome-like metal common to those Phyrexians of this faction, known as the Progress Engine. Those of the Progress Engine hold themselves to a higher degree of perfection than the other factions, and pursue what they refer to as the Great Synthesis. The Great Synthesis is the ultimate Phyrexian idealization of Mirrodin. Jin Gitaxius seeks the perfection of all life through the most perfect of methods, clinical experimentation. Of all the Praetors, Jin Gitaxius is the most concerned with converting the face of the world formerly known as Mirrodin to its Phyrexian ideal, from the smallest organism to the greatest sea. Jin Gitaxius is a living storehouse of research data, collated from every tidbit of vicious exploration conducted throughout the plane. As a leader, Jin Gitaxius is the most organized and focused of the Praetors, keeping the progress engine on task and following a strict rank of hierarchy. Praetor for the Red Aligned Phyrexians, Urobrask the Hidden is temperamental and unpredictable. He leads the Quiet Furnace a faction found near the hot molten core of Mirrodin. The Quiet Furnace is the more industrial side of New Phyrexia, managing the forge workers and slag harvesters of the plane's furnace level. This faction is unique because it only interacts in a limited fashion with the rest of Phyrexia, preferring to keep its independence. Urabrask himself is a vicious living machine, a weapon forged in excellence. His body is comprised of bone, claw, and sharpened steel, with a sleek design that makes him both nimble and quick. Although Urobrask may be a terrifying opponent, he isn't what you'd consider a team player. For a Phyrexian, he's hot-headed and prone to random aggressive outbursts. His rage towards the other factions is well known. While he'd never consider fighting against them, 
Ourobrask has been found to act against Phyrexian interests. Ourobrask has even allowed Mirrodin refugees into the Furnace level, commanding his forces to turn a blind eye. Unique to the Praetors, he doesn't pursue the endgame, but rather focuses on the here and now. And right now, the monolithic and freedom-crushing hierarchy of the Phyrexians is really starting to get on his nerves. Praetor to the Green Phyrexians, Vorin Klex leads the faction known as the Vicious Swarm. The Vicious Swarm is the main fighting force for the Phyrexians, although they don't fight like a typical army. They are more like hunting beasts, tracking and killing prey as they scour Mirrodin for weaknesses. They believe that Phyrexia should develop more naturally, based on the roles of predation, allowing the strong to emerge triumphant over the weak. The Vicious Swarm is an artificial engine, unrelenting and very efficient. They believe that process and thought are nothing compared to the raw power of instinct. Lacking any sort of organization whatsoever, this faction is basically a group of random Phyrexians, killing one another and everything else in an insane display of natural selection. Vorinclex himself is more beast-like than his fellow Praetors, appearing the most organic in his construction. Don't let his animal structure fool you, however. This leader's philosophy still aligns with Phyrexians' hatred of flesh and idealization of the machine. He was born from one of the plane's many birthing pods, and represents one of Phyrexia's greatest successes in replicating the ferocity of nature. Though the nature of the Vicious Swarm doesn't really account for leaders, Vorinclex is indeed the strongest of the faction. That doesn't mean he has true power, however. Another has risen up and gained control of leading most of the forces of his faction. The Phyrexianized elf, Glissa the Traitor. Leader of the Black Aligned Phyrexians, Shiro Dread, Whispering One, rules as Praetor of the Seven Steel Thrains. The Black Phyrexians are basically the living embodiment of Old Phyrexia, twisted, horrifying abominations who only seek to overthrow and corrupt. As a faction, however, the Seven Steel Thrains is unique in that there is a constant power struggle going on within its members. The faction gets its name from the Seven Thrains who constantly vie for control and the title of Praetor. Shield Dread currently holds this title, but the other six Thrains consist of Cranox the Deep Thrain, Lord of the Corrupting Phyrexian Oil, Roxith, Thrain of Rot, Lords over Flesh used as building and sculpting material, Geth, Lord of the Vault, the self-described Thrain of Steel, Ruler of Isha, the Vault of Whispers. Azak Azog, the Demon Thrain, Lord of Fear and Brutality. Thrissix, the Withering Thrain, Mistress of Death and Rebirth. And Vrain, Thrain of Blood, a Phyrexian Vampire Lord. Shield Red has become Praetor through her subtle tactics, using debt and spies to obtain and maintain her throne. If her whispers don't get you first, perhaps her body would dissuade those who would challenge her rule. She walks with a spider's grace, a female torso atop a hungering mouthed beast. Out of all the other Praetors, Shieldred is the most commanding of her faction. And lastly, we have the leader of the White Aligned Phyrexians, the iconic Praetor Elish Norn, Grand Cenobite. Elish Norn rules over the White Faction known as the Machine Orthodoxy, the closest thing Phyrexians have to a church. As a faith, those in this faction believe in the importance of unifying all of Phyrexia under a single banner, by indoctrinating all life with the Phyrexian beliefs. The Machine Orthodoxy is broken down into three different sects, all looking to achieve unity through different means. Those of the Flesh Singularity seek total unification by literally flaying the creatures and inhabitants of Mirrodin, and sewing them together. The Porcelain Legion capture and attempt to adapt creatures by implanting white metal plates onto their skin, in order for them to share an appearance with the Phyrexians of this faction. While the Disciples of Karn held Karn hostage, and pushed him ever deeper into madness. They believed he was the storied father of machines, and sought leadership from his insanity. Elish Norn leads this faction, but does not abide to any one sect of this religion. 
These are the leaders of New Phyrexia, the Praetors who brought Mirrodin to heal, the rise of a once dead evil. But with them all developing from different sources of mana, conflict between these factions was always inevitable. Their infighting would ultimately lead to the freeing of Karn and the destabilization of their nation. The factions would wage a civil war on one another, allowing the Mirrodin natives to rise up and resist their total assimilation. And that, my friends, is the story behind the Praetors of New Phyrexia. As a part of my 13 Nights of Magic series, with this video I'll also be giving away a copy of Elish Norn to one lucky viewer. To win this iconic staple, all you have to do is be a subscriber to the channel and leave a comment on this video. Remember, each Night of Magic brings with it a new story and another chance to win a card. So stay tuned to see what other Monsters of Magic are offered this October. This series and all its giveaways are brought to you by abugames.com. abugames.com is a leading online store for all things Magic the Gathering and I really recommend you guys checking them out. In any case, if you enjoyed the video, please consider throwing it a like and sharing it with your friends. It goes a long way in supporting future content. As always guys, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you on the next Night of Magic.